In this video, I'll be showing you how to install Ubuntu 24.04 LTS on your computer step by step using both Linux or Windows. Installing Ubuntu is not difficult, but if you are new to this or if you take one wrong step somewhere, it can be a real problem. You can lose your data and may even leave your computer unable to start. Also, Ubuntu 24.04 LTS comes with a brand new installer that has some additional steps and options. This is quite different from the old Ubuntu installer we have used for decades now. So I'll be showing you how to install this amazing distro in a very beginner friendly way. We'll be using the simplest and fastest way here, while I'll also be explaining what a particular option does in case you want to change things up a bit. Let's jump right in. You can use the timestamps to directly jump to the installation path if you've already downloaded the Ubuntu ISO file or any other step really. If you haven't already downloaded it, you can follow through with me. Download the Ubuntu 24.04 LTS ISO file by going to the official site. The download link is given in the description below. Once the download completes, let's make a bootable USB stick. First, I'll show how to do it on Linux, then Windows. Plug in a USB stick or a pen drive and go to the download location. Right click on the downloaded file and select open with disk image writer. Here, select the USB stick in this drop down. Don't select any other hard disk here. The USB stick will be formatted, so if you have any data on it, back it up first. Click on Start Restoring and enter your password. If you're on Windows, you need to download Rufus using the link given in the description below. It's just 1 MB, so this shouldn't take long. Once downloaded, plug in the USB stick you want to use and open Rufus you'll see this interface. The USB stick will be formatted, so make sure it doesn't have any important data on it. In Rufus, under Device, select the USB stick you just plugged in. Then click on the button labeled Select, just under it. It will open the file selector. Select the downloaded Ubuntu ISO file there and click on Start at the bottom. Press OK on all subsequent dialog boxes and wait for Rufus to do its work. It will take up to 5 minutes for the bootable USB stick to be created. Once it is done, make sure any important data on your computer is backed up. I'll guide you in a way where we don't destroy any data, but I'll also give you options where you can format partitions and it's better to be careful. And installing an operating system inherently carries a risk of data loss. This is not like installing an app on your computer. So if you have any important stuff on your computer, back it up externally right now. Once this is done, restart the computer with the USB stick plugged in. The computer will now boot into our Ubuntu live session. If it doesn't boot into our Ubuntu live session by itself, you need to manually select the USB stick to boot from. For this, as soon as you press the power button while the computer is starting, you need to press either F12 or some other key based on your computer model to go into boot menu. From there, you can select the USB stick and boot it in UEFI mode if you have that option. If you don't know which key to press, Google boot selection key followed by your computer's manufacturer and model. Once that is done, here we select try or install Ubuntu option by just clicking enter or you can just wait for 5 seconds and it will automatically select the first option. Ok, so here we are. We have successfully booted into a Ubuntu live session. This is your Ubuntu 24.04 LTS Noble Numbat. Give it a few seconds and you'll see this screen pop up. This is the new Ubuntu installer. Ubuntu has retired the old installer and now we get this. Don't worry though, this is fairly simple to use and I'll guide you through all the steps here. First, select your language. You can scroll here or quickly type the first three letters of your language name. For example, pressing POR quickly will get you Portuguese. I want English and it's already selected, so I'll just click on next. This is the accessibility menu. Ubuntu has done a great job incorporating it here. So if you need any assistive features like larger text or high contrast, you can turn them on here. I'll just click on next. Okay, here you have to select your keyboard layout. The default should be fine for everybody. But if you need other language layouts, you can select it here. I'm gonna go with English, so I'll just click on next. Here we get the option to connect to the internet. This is fine either way. The installation doesn't require an internet connection. It installs absolutely fine without the internet. So you can connect if you want or you can just ignore this and move to the next step. But internet is required for an option later on so let's go ahead and connect to the internet and click on next. Now here you might see the screen or you might not. If you don't see the screen that means you ended up on the next screen. I'll come to this in a second so hold on. 
If you do see this update screen, then it is recommended to update the installer. You can skip it, but it's recommended to update it. If you click on update now, it will update the installer in a couple of minutes. Then you need to close it and start the installer again by double clicking on the icon here. But don't immediately close the installer after the update. Give it 10 seconds and close it by clicking on the X on the top right of the window or else it might crash the OS as it did for me many times. You'll again need to go through the options we just saw till now to reach this screen. Then you'll be asked what you want to do with Ubuntu. Install it or try it out. Here select install Ubuntu and click on next. If you manually started the installer, then you won't see this screen. You'll directly go to the next screen. Okay, on this screen, you can keep the interactive installation selected and click on next. The automated installation option is for advanced users and it has its own prerequisites. So let's click on next with the interactive option selected. Here we again get two options. The default installation installs a minimal Ubuntu system with just the browser installed. Basic stuff like settings are present here. Any additional application you want, you'll have to manually install them after the installation completes. You can see how this can be very powerful in creating a very sleek operating system that has only the stuff you want and nothing else. The second option gives us a more usable system. I strongly recommend the extended option. It'll give you LibreOffice and some other basic utilities. These are needed for a more usable system. And the storage usage difference is not that big. So let's click on extended and click on next. Okay, here we get two options. The first one installs drivers for things like NVIDIA proprietary GPUs and other important drivers like Wi-Fi drivers. This is important to get the best out of your hardware. So select this. This should be selected if you have NVIDIA GPUs as installing the proprietary drivers really improves the performance. The second option installs multimedia codecs which are crucial components for media playback. Without this, you might not be able to play videos and music both locally as well as on many websites. So both these options should be selected. Then click on next. Okay, now we move on to partitioning and selecting the location on your hard disk to install Ubuntu. This step requires that you be very careful as mistakes here can lead to losing your data. Be careful here and understand the steps and options clearly. As if you mess up here, you might even leave your computer unable to boot up. And I hope you have backed up your important data. Okay, with that being said, let's jump ahead. Alright, we're gonna see many options here, so let's break them down one by one. The first option is install alongside any other operating system on your computer. This is the safest and simplest option here. If you're a Windows user and you're new to Linux, then this is the option you should use. It'll give you both Windows and Ubuntu. You can choose which operating system you want to use when you start your computer. You get access to Windows and Ubuntu. This is called a dual boot and many people use Linux like this. And you don't have to do any partitioning as well. All your data will remain safe with this. If you're new to Linux, choose this option and you cannot go wrong with it. The second option erases your entire hard disk, so stay clear of it. You lose all your documents, files, your homework folder and everything. Don't click on it, don't hover your mouse on it, heck don't even look at it. I said don't look at it. Don't use the second option unless you know what you are doing. The third option is for choosing the install location manually. Here you will be shown a list of all the partitions on your hard disk. People who choose the first option in the last screen won't get this option. So you guys hold on a second, we'll be with you in a sec. Here you can identify your partitions or drives by their size, format and location. You have to be very careful here. Click on the partition that you want to use and click on change. Click on this drop down and select ext4 from this list. This is the file type we'll be using. And in this drop down select slash which stands for root in the unix file system. The whole thing should look like this. Remember the partition or drive you select here will be formatted and it will lose all the data on it. This is the partition on which your Ubuntu will be installed. You can also delete partitions and create partitions from free space here. A UEFI partition gets automatically created here, but if it doesn't, then you need to additionally create a FAT32 partition of 1 gig and mount it as slash boot slash EFI. The whole thing should look like this. Okay, click next. If you find this whole thing too complex, remember, you can still go back and select the install alongside option. That's the most convenient way to install Ubuntu. In this screen, type in your name, change the name of your computer if you want and create a strong password.
Click on next. Here, select your time zone. This screen will give you a general overview of the installation that will run on your computer now. You can review it once and click on install. Now you just wait for 10-20 minutes and let the installer do its thing. This will install Ubuntu for you. A nice slideshow informing about various aspects of Ubuntu will run here. And if you are new to Ubuntu, you'll find this informative. By the way, if you are new to Linux, you should definitely consider getting some hands-on experience with the Linux terminal. Having a good knowledge of Linux commands and being comfortable using the terminal really broadens what you can do with Linux and what kind of experience you are going to get here. So if you are interested in leveling up your Linux game, definitely check out my course Linux Mastery Express which is the fastest way to learn Linux and start using Linux like a pro. I'll teach you a set of commands that will give you the confidence to use Linux without even a graphical user interface. Then we'll dive deep and learn how to use the vEditor and master shell scripting with real life examples. After teaching more than 100 students in person, I've curated this course with the top things that will level up your Linux skills the fastest. So if you're feeling like your Linux game is stuck in the same spot for too long and you're ready to take your Linux skills to the next level quickly, check out the link in the description below and get your Linux Mastery Express. We are running a massive 45% discount right now, so make use of it. Okay, once the installation is done, it'll ask you to restart your computer. Click restart and pull out the USB stick when prompted and hit enter. If you have other operating systems on your computer, then you'll see a list of them when the computer boots up. This is called the grub menu. You can use up and down arrow keys to select different operating systems and press enter to select. You can start windows by selecting it from here. By default, your computer will start in Ubuntu. Let's start Ubuntu for now. And if you don't have any other operating systems, then Ubuntu will start up without this screen. You will be welcomed by your new Ubuntu 24.04 LTS system. First, you'll have to log in with the password you had created earlier. Then, you'll see this welcome app pop up. Firstly, welcome. You can see the changelog for this version by clicking here. We're gonna go to next. Then, you'll be offered to enable Ubuntu Pro. Now, you don't have to pay anything here. Ubuntu Pro is free for personal use for up to 5 devices. This gives you additional support of 5 years. Normally, this version will be supported till 2027, which I think is enough. But if you enable Pro, it'll get supported till 2034. You'll also receive additional security updates. If you need this, then go ahead and enable it. I'm gonna skip this and you can safely skip it too. This is mainly an enterprise feature. Then you get the option where you can send some info to Canonical and help make Ubuntu better. Things like which software are mostly used in Ubuntu, in which countries is Ubuntu mostly used and some other analytical data is collected and this is used to make Ubuntu better for users. This doesn't send any personal information to Ubuntu. You can see a sample of what information is sent by clicking on the show first report. So you can keep it enabled or if you want, you can disable it. Then you are prompted to get more apps and enhance your Ubuntu. Ubuntu 24.04 comes with a brand new app center. You can open it up and browse and install new software. You get a huge selection of software to choose from. Media players, office tools, development utilities and programming languages and entertainment stuff. You have a lot to explore here. You can open the app center by either clicking here or you can open it from here. Then you click on finish. Take a moment and soak it in. You have successfully installed the new Ubuntu 24.04 LTS aka Noble Numbat. Now the first thing you should do is smash that subscribe button and leave me a big thumbs up if you found this video useful. Also turn on the notifications so that you're the first one to catch all my Linux videos. Then go ahead and change the wallpapers, themes, install some applications and have fun or get some work done. Whatever you do, you should definitely check out my video of the top 20 things you must do after installing Ubuntu to get a supercharged experience out of it. In that video, I've shared pro tips to boost your Ubuntu's performance, speed up your internet, get better battery life and many more fantastic tips that will take your Ubuntu experience to the next level. So absolutely don't miss that video. Alright, this is the next text, signing out.